the turkeys have gotten big. Um, pretty sure we got one male and one female. Not 100% sure, but um, we got them in May, so they're, what, almost six months old. Moo moo. Moo. There's Moo Moo, the three-legged cat. Moo boo. There he goes. Okay, here's Gertie. Gertrude. Gertie. Ooh, Gertie, Gertie, Gertie. Gertie and Moo Boo. Gertie. Hey, Gert. You're a good dog. A little annoying sometimes because you want so much attention, but you're a good dog. It is fall on the homestead. Uh, last night, it, it was chilly the last two nights. Uh, we haven't got a frost yet. I don't think we will for a while, but I, I mean, it was cold. Um, it is 7 o'clock, like I said, and it's time to feed the animals. In the morning before work, I feed the cats and the horses usually. And my wife and daughter feed everybody else for us. And at night, I try to feed because my wife is inside with a baby. And sometimes our daughter will feed the pigs for us. And then she feeds the cats and dogs at night. So we kind of got a system. Um, and that system is everybody does a little bit of work. But let's go ahead and uh, get these turkeys in their coop. And we'll feed the bantam chickens, the horses, the pigs. And then I'm going to show you what I think is a pretty good homestead secret if you're uh, trying to do renovations that I'm going to show you. Uh, at, at least I think it's a great tip for me, and I'm going to show you how we're using that tip. Gertie, you got yourself a bone. Gertie, Gertie. Gertie got some bone. That's a big bone, girl. Enjoy that bone, girl. Okay, the turkeys know it's time to eat. Um, we had to separate the turkeys from our chickens because the male turkey was attacking our chickens, and that was not good. So we're working on a plan to... Uh, a long-term plan so everybody can get or work together and not attack each other, turkey. All right, here's our little bantams. Um, I'm going to do a video on them later. Um, we had a few bantams. This silky was one, but we did not realize how small these guys were going to be. Uh, those are two chicks that the silky is raising, not bantams. But these bantams are tiny. They're BBs. I mean, they are small. But later we'll do a little video on them. They have a new place to live, which I'm standing in, but I'm going to show you more of that in a future video, but just check them out. I like this little guy. A little rooster. He's cute though, ain't he? He's a cute little bantam rooster. He's beautiful looking. Okay, I'll put you down so you can eat. Get a few eggs here. Sometimes if we have extra eggs or I have an extra dirty one, I give eggs to our dogs. Um, actually, a rat terrier will go find them in uh, the hay hut. So I'm going to give this egg to Gertie the pit bull and see what she does with it. Gertie. Oh, she just ran away. She's like, that is my egg.
She takes a little bite and punctures it. Moo boo. She takes a little bite, punctures it, and then she gets her whole egg to eat. Smart dog, smart dog. Teddy, I guess you want one? I give Gertie one, I gotta give Teddy one, so. Teddy, there's an egg for you, buddy. You want it? Okay, and there's Teddy with his egg. Taking it to show Gertie and say, hey, I got one too. Corgi butt. So behind me, you can see the horses. They're ready to eat. But first, we're going to feed our mini pigs. We got three of them. The three little pigs. We also got our beehives. Uh, I don't got to feed them right now. Uh, sometimes I do give them sugar water in the fall, which I did that last week. Uh, but right now, my bees are looking good. I got five hives going. And hopefully, uh, they make it through the winter is my goal. But let's go ahead and feed our mini pigs. Why are you hit the donkey? Wyatt, come here, buddy. Last but not least, buddy. Come on over here. Enjoy your dinner, bud. I always check my gate, make sure it's locked. Um, most of our neighbors are great people. There's one that's a big jerk, uh, but most of our neighbors are awesome. But I always like to check the gate. Um, just another way to keep my family safe in the country. I figure if someone's getting through that gate, they're probably here to not do good at night. Um, so it's just a way for me to know that somebody's probably uh, on my property, not for the right reason, if it's dark and they've gone over a gate, um, a locked gate. So uh, yeah, that's just me. I think gates and fences are good things. So let me show you my secret for homestead renovations. It's actually in my car. I just got it at Lowe's today. I've gotten this before and I'll get it again. But let me show you. I'm grabbing it. It's in a bucket, people. Dun, dun, dun. Let me show you. Here is my top secret. That's right, it is red barn and fence paint. Um, this thing has been wonders getting this paint. That's five gallons of paint, only $70. Um, I painted this she shed, which hadn't been painted in 20 years. I painted it for less than 70 bucks because I still got about a gallon left. So our goal is to fix up a lot of our outbuildings Paint them all red, that's gonna protect them. Um, if we use paint, if we're staining, we'll stain. But that red paint has really um, lasted. So again, for 70 bucks, I painted this. Um, I guess maybe 80 bucks if you count the white paint, which wasn't much. So that's what the secret is, the red paint. Our barn is red and white. And I haven't painted that, but um, it's probably going to need some updating eventually soon. The white trim. The man shed looks horrible. It's basically just a storage shed. But, pro but I promise you, because I promised myself, that's going to be painted nice, red and white. This fence is going to get painted red and white. The chicken coop is kind of an eyesore. It didn't look great seven years ago when we bought the farm. And it really needs to be updated now. And I can see it each day when I go to work. Um, it's kind of a centerpiece of the farm, really, the chicken coop. And it needs to be improved. So red and white paint 
is the way to go, I think, because it's so affordable. Any other paint is not going to be affordable. I also don't have to wait in line uh, to get my paint mix. It's already made because it's so uh, it's such a great deal. So uh, red and white paint people. So eventually our whole farm is gonna have the decor of red and white. It's gonna look like a peppermint. Um, I guess lucky for us, or for me, my wife loves the color red. She has her red truck. So, uh, you know, red's a great color. It's affordable. It has that farm aesthetic, uh, that country chic, I guess. Me, I'm more about, of course, I want things to look good, but I want things to be affordable, to be in my budget. And red and white just looks good and it's affordable. So in the future, most of our outbuildings, I'm putting the paint up inside the she shed now. Most of our outbuildings are gonna be red and white because it looks good, but it's also in my budget, people. So the, man, so the first thing that's gonna get painted red and white again is the chicken coop, which it is red and white, but it needs to be updated. And then I'm going to uh, paint this fence, which hasn't been painted in a long, long time. And then I have um, an old uh, trailer here. I'll show you real quick. Uh, that trailer is going to get painted red and white. I know it's going to bleed through eventually, but this is just a cheap trailer. An old trailer, I guess maybe not a cheap trailer. A friend gave that to me for free. Now it's our farm uh, trailer. The man shed needs some major work. The chicken coop, um, I've been working on. And if I give it a nice paint job, it's gonna be really a centerpiece of the farm. So this is just what I do on our homestead, on our farm. Just leave a comment below and tell me what your tips are whenever you do a homestead renovation. I'd love to hear. And if you like our channel, say hello, subscribe, and uh, keep on watching.